Hi, I'm Bill Moffitt and I'm an industry product marketing manager focused on the manufacturing industry with Microsoft Dynamics. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a different approach that we are leveraging with Microsoft Dynamics AX and specifically how users are going to be able to consume the information that we can provide out in the manufacturing environment. One of the most exciting parts of the R3 release is the ability to further leverage the Microsoft App Story. What the Microsoft AX product team has done is build an app that specifically addresses the needs out on the shop floor. We've referred to this internally as the Shannon app because it replicates the needs of Shannon, who is a shop floor operator role found in Dynamics AX. We've even taken the key requirements of her role and placed them in a modern user interface that allows the user to take advantage of our modern devices and leverage the power of touch. This app allows users an easy way to view and edit information out on the shop floor while embracing our one Microsoft approach. So I'm now going to demonstrate this app. I'll show how we can start production jobs, report on production quantities, both good and bad quantities, read work instructions and drawings, report the occasional breaks that people take, and even report absence and reasons for absence. To start the uh, shop floor control app, the first thing we need to do is simply click on the icon and it will pull us up to uh, a login screen. Now while we're looking at this, we can actually go over some of the setting capabilities that you have here. And we have different connection settings that you can click on. Certainly the uh, demo mode capability where literally you can uh, use this app uh, offline without any kind of connection uh, to the internet. It will provide updated information and uh, new data every time you log in so you're working with a constant set of data. But also, if you want to work with a live back-end database, uh, you simply put in the server address, user name, password, and if you have any kind of default company that you want the user to actually uh, see data that is uh, specifically applied to that company, you can define that as well. We also have other filters that you have the ability to leverage, namely if you want to tie a specific user that's logging in through this application to a production unit, resource group, or an individual resource itself, you can define this as well. And even tie in whether or not this user has the ability to leverage the webcam uh, that is maybe on your Windows 8 device, uh, Surface, or so on. Now the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and log in. Uh, with the badge ID, we could have scanned it or simply typed in the uh, information click login and it will bring us immediately up to a dashboard view of what uh, the user has to do for the day. First thing they'll look at is a summary listing of different jobs and the status of those jobs as uh, they need to be working. Uh, for example, if there's any high priority jobs or jobs that they currently have on their list of things to do, they'll see there, for example, we have seven jobs that we need to have started. Uh, and we will work on those in a moment, but we want to see first off if there's any messages uh, that the uh, system has for us, such as any kind of birthdays or customer visits or any kind of other information that someone wants to uh, deploy out to the shop floor itself via Dynamics AX. And then finally over here on the uh, right hand side we can see a listing of potential registrations and jobs that we have actually performed uh, or any kind of activities that we have registered through this application itself. Those will be uh, highlighted here on this, uh, this visual graph here on the right hand side. But for first off we want to take a look and go ahead and process a job and we'll go ahead and click on this and this will pull up the full listing of all the jobs that we have uh, that have yet to work on in our system and it gives us a, a nice view of what we need to do for the day. So as we can see here we have I think seven jobs, uh, but if we had seven jobs or maybe 700 jobs, there's still a value of being able to find those jobs specifically. If there were multiple ones on the screen, we could certainly go back and forth or sort up and down uh, searching for them. But what I've always found is filtering is always the easiest way. So we have that filtering capability built in here where we can click on, uh, do a search on the number 49, and it pulls up production order uh, 5249 and we can simply go in, click on that, and let's go look at the details of that item itself. And as you see, 
we have all the job uh, production order information over here on the uh, left hand side we see that we have uh, one item that we need to work on for this job uh, we see that we do have an attachment that's interesting and we'll go back we'll touch on that in a moment uh, but we can also see there's specific uh, raw materials and uh, that we need to have associated with this what the what the process is for working on this job and if there's anybody that's associated with this job that may also be working on it I can view that information here but I mentioned earlier that we have attachments uh, available for this order itself and by simply clicking on this we can pull up a visual way of looking at the information uh, maybe it's a picture of the product maybe it's specific directions on how to go about using this product maybe there's a video that we want to associate with this on how to actually go about uh, putting this uh, working on this job and putting it together all of that can be tied directly to this individual production order uh, for this job and then viewed through this uh, through this interface now what we're going to do is we're going to take a step back and I'm going to go back to uh, the, the job itself uh, we're going to pull up the main list uh, and I'm going to actually get rid of the filter here and I'm going to take a look at this first order that we have uh, 9989 I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go ahead and start this job. We're ready to go ahead and begin production uh, for, on this job itself. Simply go down, click start, and it brings up uh, the process of how many actually uh, items on this order of these uh, speakers do we actually want to go ahead and start working on. It automatically defaults to the full amount. I could have lowered that by simply clicking on the minus or plus sign if I wanted to increase that. Uh, and then once I find the number that I'm happy with, I go ahead and click start. And we'll see that that order itself has disappeared from our list of jobs to do. And when I go back, refresh the page, we'll see that we have one job running. Now say it's a couple hours later, the job's finished. We can then go in, find that job, uh, click on it again, and take a look at, is it ready? Is it complete? Are we ready to report on it? If so, we can go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, unit 10. Uh, for total number quantity and uh, then go over here say it's complete and we'll go ahead and report on it and we'll see if that job disappears and when we go back here refresh again it's no longer in the my running jobs as we have completed that now periodically throughout the day uh, you'll have to uh, do different things while you're out there on the shop floor. It's not all about just managing the jobs themselves. We do have the ability to do different types of activities, such as uh, indirect activities, maybe cleaning up the area, maybe there's a company meeting, or some kind of equipment repair that needs to go on while you're out there. Obviously, you want to be able to record the time that you're, uh, you've spent doing that as well. We can go over here and simply click on that. Uh, we'll, we'll say that we're working on some regular equipment maintenance and by clicking on this it then starts recording the amount of time that I've worked on this item or uh, some quantity of uh, repair units that I've put into a specific job itself uh, so that's a nice way of actually being able to do more than just job related activities and finally if for some reason maybe it's around lunchtime and I'm in the middle of a, uh, a, a job run uh, I certainly don't want to log off uh, maybe I want to simply find a way to uh, record that I am taking a break and by going down here clicking on take a break I can uh, simply click on break for lunch and the system will lock lock down and allow me to uh, take a step away and I don't have to worry about anybody coming in behind me and inadvertently making some updates uh, once I'm back I can then go in and start working again by simply clicking on start working again and the screen will pop back up back to where I was working on it before. The demo you've just seen is still a bit of a work in process. We are actively engaged with customer advisory panels that are providing direct feedback on functional and usability enhancements that we plan to include in the final release of the product. Rest assured though, we will continue to leverage the same general design and the great usability that it provides. The app will leverage a touch-enabled interface and will give users access to information on any device running Windows 8. 
which really makes for a useful tool in the manufacturing environment. From a pre-sales perspective, these same features also lead to very effective sales demonstrations. The app also comes with a demo mode included, meaning that we now have a fresh new pre-sales and demonstration tool to leverage during the sales cycle. This new approach to deploying functionality to workers in a way that they want to consume it is not just a fad. The ability to customize and configure systems, the ability to leverage a role-tailored view of information, and now the ability to deploy information to users on devices that they want to leverage in the manufacturing environment are now the norm. Workers want to work in an environment that is comfortable and productive. And with the Microsoft platform, we can provide just this. We've taken the next step in building effective solutions for manufacturers, and there is definitely excitement in the air with Microsoft Dynamics. So, I encourage you to join in the conversation with social media, and let's really get the word out. Thanks for your time, and have a great day.